Joining us is Dr. Jason Warren, soil scientist, to tell us about the relationship between soil type and water holding capacity. Yep. Well, soils are basically made up of uh, sand, silt, and clay particles, mm -hmm. and we've got organic matter and microbes in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, by volume, about those solid particles or solid constituents make up about half of the soil volume. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the soil is made up of, of pores. And those pores are either filled with air or filled with water. And uh, well, let's look at the, the mineral components, is that what you call yeah, them, or the yeah. solids yeah. of that? The, uh, yeah. So we've got sand, silt, and clay, and the proportion of sand, silt, and clay, as well as organic matter, influence the water holding capacity of a soil. Mm -hmm. And the size of those pores, then. And the size of the mm -hmm. pores. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really what it's all about, is, is sands, for instance, mm -hmm. most folks know that a sand, mm -hmm. it won't hold a lot of water. Water can rapidly move through it, but it won't hold a lot of water, and that's because it's pore mm -hmm. volume, the pores are so large. So it's well drained, but it doesn't have a lot of water available to yeah. plants. And mm -hmm. so you could irrigate it daily and, and very heavily, but you'd have to irrigate it often to minimize drought stress. Mm -hmm. And then where you've got a clay, a clay, it can hold a lot of water, but we have different forms of water. We have plant available water, um, and then saturated water conditions, and then we have what we call permanent wilting point. The water holding capacity or the, the wa plant available water holding capacity is dictated by the soil's ability to hold water against gravity and the, the soil's ability to release that water to the plant. Okay. And clays, like I say, they hold a lot of water, but a lot of that water is held at very tightly in the very small pores and the plants can't get it out. And then you have uh, a loam is what is in this pot. And this is an ideal soil type as far as texture is concerned because it has enough small pores to hold uh, the maximum amount of water against the pull of gravity, but they're not so small um, that the water can't be pulled out of them. And so a loam is an ideal soil mm -hmm. with respect to, to water holding capacity. Now you also mentioned there's uh, organic matter in the soil as well. Yep. What role does that play? Mm -hmm. Well, organic matter in a heavier textured or what we call a clay or textured soil, it serves to coat the clays and it generally allows those pores to be larger. Mm -hmm. In a sand, it simply serves as a, a sponge that would itself hold the water. Mm -hmm. And so it does different things in different soils. Um, like I say, in sands, it, it's more of a sponge in the mm -hmm. sand. So it adds water holding capacity to a sand. Yeah, more mm -hmm. directly. In a clay, it alters the physical characteristics and the interaction between clay particles such that mm -hmm. the pores can become larger. And then we get a better drainage and yeah, more available water. Better drainage, mm -hmm. better water infiltration, mm -hmm. and then by that you'd have uh, improved uh, water uptake in the plant from the clay because the pores are kind of increased in size. Okay. Jason, how can a homeowner determine the texture of their soil? Well, uh, we have a method we call the texture by feel method. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty simple, although you need to be calibrated to some extent. But you essentially mm -hmm. take your soil and moisten it. Okay. Um, and more. then there's a few, whoa, Oops, there we much. go. <laughs> yeah. And there's a few things you can look for. Sands, of course, are going to be nice and gritty. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why we want to moisten it is because all soils dry and ground up are going to be gritty right. because they're going to, you're going to fill the aggregates. But a sand will be gritty whether it's wet or dry mm -hmm. and um, it won't hold together at all. And as it becomes, or, uh, as you get into soils with more clay content, they'll start to stick together more. Okay. So here's the, the loam. Yeah, and then so the loam, the loam, they're going to be nice and smooth, and they're going to stick together and, and form a, a fairly nice ball. You can also throw that up in the air, and it's generally not going to break apart. Mm -hmm. As you start to run it through your fingers, though, it will break apart, but it's fairly consolidated when you, when you make a ball out of it, mm -hmm. and it's fairly stable. But the main thing I tell people is it's nice and smooth yeah. and a soil that feels good and works easy in your hand is generally going to be some sort of loam. Okay. And clay, of course, sticks together quite a bit. We all know that Yeah. Here. <laughs> and this is a very extensive uh, clay. Uh, it's very heavy clay. And it's going to, it's getting a little dry, but it'll, 
run out on off your finger a long ways. Mm -hmm. They're generally going to be shiny. And the biggest thing about it is when you get it moist, it's even under moist condition, it's going to be very hard to work between your finger and, and uh, fourth, your thumb and forefinger. And so that's going to be a very problematic soil. Okay, and then we'll want to loosen that up with some of our organic matter. Yep, organic matter, and then keep it covered to where it doesn't consolidate back into a large mass. Okay, and covered with a mulch. Yes, yeah. Okay. And that's generally true for any soil. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jason. Yep, thank you. This soil area really demonstrates the benefits of mulch. This area was not mulched, and you could see how rainwater, just simply rainwater hitting the surface, has created a crust across the top, and now it's impenetrable to water, so it's just going to have more runoff. It's also tough on plants. So ideally, we would break this area up and then cover it with mulch to help uh, reduce those problems. <laughs>